Hi there, I'm Clarice and you're on the Live Ready YouTube channel. I am out looking for some natural materials that I can char and add to my fire kit. I'm going to go through some synthetic materials as well and the advantages of them and how to go about it. because it lights a lot easier than a tinder bundle does um, a lot of the time. Bar if you're using something like um, fatwood, fatwood also takes a spark really fast. Um, but instead of standing around processing a tinder bundle until you're blue in the face, having char cloth can actually speed the process up so much because it takes a spark um, or it lights really easily and creates a coal that you can then use in your tinder bundle. So even though I'm by a river and most of the materials here are wet, we're not looking for dry materials right now. We're looking for materials that we can process that will help us in order to be able to create a fire. So have a look at this. That's some old plant material. This seems to be a palm tree that's washed up here on the riverbed. And even though some of it is wet, it's got this wonderfully fine material to it. And I'm pretty sure if you char that and keep it in your fire kit, you'll be able to use this to light a fire really easily. So first off, when you're trying to make a fire with something like flint and steel, to get a spark on material, you actually need a very well processed material. So something like cloth that's been charred, it's basically been made into a form of charcoal, but it's a lot thinner and a lot easier to light with something like flint and steel or even with a ferro rod. So what we do is we take a piece of cloth and we process it in an anaerobic environment on heat um, to remove all of the chemicals that are used to produce that cloth or um, that fabric. And what's left is um, the carbon components like charcoal that burn really easily. And it doesn't burn with a flame, it sort of makes a tiny little coal and that coal spreads throughout the cloth. So it also reduces the amount of your resources that you need to use. So if you're, for example, using a ferro rod, you can use a ferro rod, strike it once, and even just that once, if it lights the cloth in a tiny little piece of the cloth, that coal will spread throughout that piece of cloth, um, and you'll get quite a big coal that you can put inside your tinder bundle. Now, you can use any tin. You don't have to use a specific tin. Um, you don't have to make a hole in your tin either, because tins don't usually seal completely waterproof. Um, the gases and the chemicals that are used to produce that material will actually escape from the tin. This is an old dishcloth that I accidentally set alight. It's not very good um, fire practice. It was a little bit close to my stove. But um, I decided it's, it's a sign. It has to be char cloth. So I made char cloth out of this and it's great for a ferro rod, but it's difficult to get a spark from flint and steel using this kind of thick material. Um, something like this cotton material which is also a relatively thick material but it processes a lot better um, and this is much better for flint and steel so I'm going to use this piece of fabric to make a bit of charred material and what you want to do is you want to be sure that you leave some space in between the pieces um, of material that you're charring so some of these pieces of palm safety first and if you watch carefully you'll start to see where it smokes that is where the chemicals that are used to make the material or the fabric are actually burning off and it does actually catch a light and you can sometimes see that there's a little flame that comes out the side and once that flame is done and once it stops smoking from the tin you know your char cloth is ready you don't have to do this on an open fire. I happen to be planning a braai, so I'm doing it on the fire. 
but you can do this on a tiny little stove as well, a little gas stove or any flame or any heat source that you can find. The only thing is you want to do it in a really well ventilated place, hello Indy, um, so that you don't breathe in all the gases that burn off of that um, material that you're busy charring. And the next one can go on. Because I'm now charring natural material, I don't expect to see the same little flame popping out on the side of the tin that I did when I was processing the fabric. This tin is still a little bit warm, but it has cooled down considerably, enough for me to touch it. Let's see what we've got. This one was white before, so you can see that it's completely processed. Okay, this was the tin with the natural material, more like a coal, and it's even brittle. But you can definitely make use of that if you're trying to light a tinder bundle. This is definitely going to help you add it right in there. Last but not least, my dishcloth. So this I find works really well for ferro rod. Um, flint and steel doesn't take a light from this really easily at all. And you can see this is the nice thing about char cloth is there's a, a little coal developing there there are all these little burning parts here and that heat will just travel throughout this piece of material until it's consumed just about all of it and um, it gives you quite a bit of time to put it in the tinder bundle I haven't actually processed this one at all quite damp grass, it's not ideal, but it will work. Easy as that. Well it's time for a bra now and if you've liked this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and share these videos so that it gets the information out there. Until the next time, live reading.